Okay, we're looking at number two from the 2010 Form B AP Physics B exam. And this problem is a pendulum problem dealing with frequency and energy uh, and experimentation. And so all we've got here is a pendulum. And we know it's a simple pendulum, and we'd like to experimentally determine the frequency of the pendulum. Mark everything we want to use in the experiment. Now, when you have these experiment problems, and you have a list of things to mark. Don't just mark everything. You have to actually mark the equipment that you're going to use. And you have to justify the usage later on. So make sure everything you mark, you legitimately will be using. And really, for this, the best experiment, all you need to mark is the stopwatch. All you're really going to need to know is the time in which it oscillates. Now, you may pick other things, like I can see you possibly picking a protractor to guarantee that it's under that 15 degree mark to continue to allow it to stay as a simple pendulum. You gotta indicate your usage if you use that. You might choose to use a photo gate instead of a stopwatch. I don't think you would use both the photo gate and the stopwatch. Again, justify the usage. Uh, B, we want to describe the experimental procedure that you would use uh, in your description. State the measurements you would make, how you would use the equipment to make those measurements, and how you would determine the frequency from these measurements. This is a pretty straightforward experiment. Indicate the way in which you're going to determine the frequency. And I would start off by indicating that you know the frequency is the inverse of the period, and that the period is the time for one complete oscillation or revolution. It's the first and foremost thing, and then state that you're going to be timing the time for one complete revolution using either the stopwatch or the photo gates. I would take it to the next step, though. I would probably indicate that you will let the pendulum swing and time for three complete cycles, or even better yet, maybe let it complete one cycle first and then begin the stopwatch for three more complete cycles. Once you get your time for three cycles, you'll divide that time by three. Take it the next level, though. Once you know the time, make sure you indicate that you need to inverse that time to have frequency. You should probably also indicate that you'll repeat this experiment multiple times to try to remove errors or to try to help normalize the, the, the data. So uh, do the experiment th at least three times. So in summary, time... Three, oscillate, three complete oscillations for a pendulum, take the inverse of that time, repeat this experiment two more times, and then average all of those times. That'll be your frequency. C. We want to now uh, figure out what affects the, the frequency of the pendulum. Okay, What's one parameter that could be varied that'll describe how and, and describe how you conduct this experiment? So, you know, you, you've probably done this in class. A pendulum, a lot of a lot of folks think there's multiple different variables that will affect the pendulum. Folks will think it's uh, the mass of the hanging mass, the angle in which the pendulum is displaced, the length of the string itself. And there are others that, I, that I'll hear come up every so often, uh, the type of material being used or if you give it an initial push. Uh, things of this nature. You probably also know by now that the only variable that affects the frequency of a pendulum, as long as it's a simple pendulum, is the length of the pendulum itself. So you can take one of two directions, because you only need to state one parameter. So either pick a parameter that you know won't work and explain what you'll do to confirm that. Don't necessarily say you know it won't work, but I'm saying ahead of time in your mind. Or pick the parameter you know will work, such as length, and explain what you'll do to confirm that. Either which way, all we're looking for in this is a clear procedure and description of how you're going to analyze the data. So you might say, I'm going to vary the mass of the, the pendulum itself. So you're going to then state that you're going to release the pendulum mass from the same angle every time. It's going to be the same length every time. And all you want to do is time uh, three cycles, determine the frequency like you did above, for a pendulum of a given mass. Put that down in a data table. Now, increase the mass a known value. Repeat the exact procedure. Don't vary anything other than the mass. Indicate the frequency in the table. Do that at least three times. Now, you're looking at your data. At this point in time, you know your frequency for all three. You should be able to confirm, more or less, if that mass did indeed affect the frequency or not. Okay, D. After swinging for a long time, the pendulum eventually comes to rest. We're going to assume the room is completely thermally insulated. That means no energy will enter or leave. 
How, how will the temperature of the room change? Well, if the pendulum came to rest, its uh, mechanical energy turned into heat loss, environmental energy. So we're losing energy from the pendulum to the outside environment. Well, that outside environment is limited to the room because that heat can't leave the room. So it should cause the temperature room to slightly increase, very slightly. E, we're now going to take that thin uh, string and replace it with a thin light metal rod instead. We want to know if the temperature of the room increases enough, what effect might that have on the period of the pendulum? This is one where you got to re recognize from thermal expansion that as the temperature goes up, the length of a metal rod will increase. And since the length of the metal rod increases, the period will increase. Because period, and you should put this equation down here in your justification, period is 2 pi radical L over G. And so if L goes up, T will go up. If T goes up, remember, frequency is inversely related. Uh, we don't even need to worry about frequency anyhow. This one's just dealing with period. So if the length goes up, the period goes up. So it will increase. That's what you're tossing down in your justification as well. Okay, that's it for number two. Thank you.